Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Wyatt 6 video. I wasn't sure what our big talking point was going to be, but we had a couple of things drop uh, recently actually in like the past few hours uh, and it includes this. So we're on Adam Pierce's Twitter account uh, and if we go down, look, he's been hacked again uh, i've just been waiting a bit to see if there was going to be anything else that would get added because we know the other day there was quite a few posts that got uploaded and like the profile picture was changed and all that kind of stuff so i've just waited a little bit um but sadly no nothing else just this uh post but it's still pretty good in all fairness, uh, it's just a gif of Adam Pierce when he was the postman, right? Uh, when he went into the Firefly Funhouse. And up here, look, repeated six times. Message delivered. It's backwards, right? But message delivered. And they did. They did deliver a message. I think what's interesting is they're called Wyatt Six, right? And the S is, is a six. So it feels like there's six of them. Now, obviously, there's the theory that the sixth person is Bray, right? Uh, there's also the theory that the sixth person is Alexa. But they're still kind of really sticking with that six theme. So even though there was only five of them there, uh, they've still written it out six times. Now... Have they done that because Bray was there in spirit? Or have they done that because that person that's like peering round? You might remember that when the camera goes to the back, there's sort of someone having a little look round the corner. Some people think that was Alexa. Could it be that that person is part of the group, right? I don't think Alexa was there just for that, but... Um, as long as you've got someone with like blonde hair that's kind of like peering around the corner, you could make it seem like it's Alexa. So I don't know. I, I, I'm a bit, bit torn as to who the sixth person is, but they've still written it six times, yet there was only five of them that seemingly were there. So because I feel like each one is from a member, you know? That's kind of what, what it seems like to me, like message delivered, message delivered, message delivered, message delivered, message delivered, message delivered. They haven't written it five times. They've written it six. Um, but obviously it was message delivered. They said they would uh, do something on the 17th. They said there would be a massacre. We got all of that. So it very much was message delivered delivered uh, the only other thing i was going to mention was i wonder if this is how they're going to communicate to us now because i thought they would use the journal they haven't used the journal they're now seemingly hacking into like adam pierce's twitter accounts could it be that they're going to hack into other people's accounts could it be we get like a weird picture on bianca belair's instagram like, you know, could it be they communicate to us that way now? Um, it's kind of a fun way to communicate to us, to be honest. I'm I'm totally down for it because you just never know what's going to pop up where. So it means we've got to keep our eyes peeled on everything. And, well, that's good for WWE, really, isn't it? So there we go. Message delivered. So uh, that's uh, what we had uh, not that long ago, about an hour ago. And we also had something else. These are all the thoughts and the theories, and we'll get to these. But uh, there was something else. Uh, here, look, you can see the end of Raw. Uh, this was the group, of course, um, in those closing moments. Well, an image has dropped showing us what they did after Raw ended. They went to Whataburger. That's, uh, that's what happened. So this is doing the rounds on social media. And uh, I feel like there's loads to talk about here. So when I first saw this, I thought this was maybe like a, a VIP meet and greet backstage. Um, but I don't think it is because they're actually in a restaurant. They're in Whataburger because you can see it written on the back of the jerseys, the picture on the wall, right? So I think they've probably finished the show and decided to go and grab a bite to eat. No, I don't think you'd go and get a bite to eat in the arena because you're going to run into fans. So it makes sense to kind of go to a restaurant like away from the arena. So I feel like they've probably done that, but they've ended up running into 
like, you know, a fan, right? So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we live in, like, you know, the modern world with phones, camera phones. Everyone's got a video camera in their pocket. I, there's not really a way of avoiding this, unfortunately. I'm not a big fan of seeing stuff like this. You know, I've come from a generation. I'm a boomer. I've come from a generation where, you know, Undertaker wouldn't do an interview out of character like you would never see him like waiting in a queue at mcdonald's uh, i've come from that generation so to see these guys like without their masks on wearing normal clothes having a burger <laughs> it's just a bit weird right but again i want to stress it's 2024. I think this kind of thing is hard to avoid. Um, and uh, a couple of other things. People have pointed out how jacked Dexter Loomis is looking. They've also pointed out Nikki Cross. She's got a Wyatt Six uh, shirt on already. And she's still got the black markings on her arm. As she was like crawling out the door, when she stood up, you could see her dress and part of her body were like dirty and they'd kind of mess them up a little bit. Well, she's still got that kind of black marking on her arm as well. My favorite thing about this, though, is the person behind Bo Dallas that I think is maybe trying to get to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> there's like a boomer behind Bo Dallas that I think I, I think he's just trying to get past. So um, my other thought was, could that be Uncle Harper? And then I thought, no, don't be silly. And then I thought, oh, my God, what if that's Alexa Bliss? What if they're bringing Alexa Bliss back as a boomer? an old boomer man and that's going to be her new gimmick so we can't rule that out this is the wyatt six uh we're not including the guy in the mavs t-shirt but we are going to include alexa bliss who's just behind bo dallas there so there we go very exciting imagine if it turned out that that was the sixth member and actually the person that was peering around the wall during the uh, massacre turned out to be that old guy. So I would love that. That would be the best. <laughs> it's Uncle Howdy's dad. So uh, there we go. So that picture was doing the rounds. And as we said, I think it's unavoidable. Uh, but there are people that are saying, you know, they don't like to see it. Kayfabe is dead. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Anyway, put that to one side. So we got the hacking of Adam Pierce's account. We also uh, got that image as well. So we had a few things dropping in the past few hours. Right, this is uh, NS Mommy. She went back to September 2018 and found this deleted tweet, deleted message from Bray. And she said that, uh, found it very interesting. The capital letters uh, say kill them all, right? So sick, abused, and abandoned. He showed me Eden. A god I can sell. It was always here. Fix everything, Mr. Mercy. Behold my children. A master reborn. This time, Jar, we change the world. Who are we? Wait for me. Do you see? Lucid. Hashtag resurrect Wyatt. So... I mean, this obviously, in retrospect, has got a few things that catch the eye, like Mr. Mercy, of course, um, and also like uh, Behold My Children, A Master Reborn. Um, there's a few, so there's definitely a few things there uh, that kind of uh, lead us, if you will, to the Firefly Funhouse. Uh, and what's quite interesting is like a few months after this, in I think it was like November, December of 2018, Bray Wyatt was tweeting out these kind of doctor reports. So it was like patient is showing improvements uh, and all this kind of stuff. So we knew that there was something going on. We hadn't seen him for a little while. We knew there was something going on. And by April of 2019, that's when we got the Firefly Funhouse. So uh, I don't know. I'm guessing he he had the, the idea at this point. But uh, yeah, it wasn't too much longer after this, like six months, seven months, that we would get the first Firefly Funhouse. So it's pretty cool to go back and have a look at those things. So good find there by NS Mommy.
Bailey said, I noticed that Gacy is holding his head where Gable is bleeding from. And then he runs his hand down his face, like how the blood runs down Gable's. I think that's really good. I think that that's actually a gesture that Gacy has always used, but it does connect really well there with where the injury is. So maybe he was communicating that as well. So I like that. Uh, Rose uh, Hartz said, Jar is the Rastafarian name of gods. So down here, this time, gods, we change the world. Uh, Daniel said, what if Nikki is portraying this part of the fiend mask we never saw? I thought that was interesting because we know that this was based on Jojo's face. And we know that Nikki, or we believe Nikki, was the bride. So you can sort of put them together, and it's kind of interesting, isn't it? I mean, I don't know whose face Nikki's mask is based on. Uh, it would not surprise me to find out it was JoJo. That would not surprise me, because uh, they were going to use this anyway. So they could like get jojo to do a new mask and i think it is a new mask because the mouth is open you can see the teeth on nikki's mask whereas this mouth is closed um but they may have broken this mask up and then uh added like a new mouth to it because we know that that mask has been kintsugid like you know it's all cracked and they've uh repaired it so maybe they use this mask I don't know. I wouldn't think so, just because I would think that they would want to keep this fiend costume largely intact because they may want to show this at exhibitions. They may want to show the fiend that we never got. Um, so I don't know that they would want to break this up. Uh, I think it's more likely they probably made a brand new mask for Nikki. But again, whose face is it based on? Right? Whose face is it based on? And as we said, it's very interesting because Nikki being the bride, uh, this being uh, the face of Jojo. Jojo was meant to be the bride of Bray, of Wyndham. So, you know, there's there's all these thoughts and theories that are like circulating around. But what I will say is we know that that group is based on the puppets. I have to think first and foremost, Nikki is based on Abby the Witch right that's that's kind of like the the main headline when it comes to nikki she's based on abby the witch and then you know we dig into things i think after that right uh justin said also eric rowan's mallet my theory is that since the red ring is on the striking parts and help is on the side uh maybe they're gonna help you see the words of the red which I kind of thought was interesting. Now, I'd not really thought about the placement of the ring, the red ring, which, you know, really does make me think of Bray being on the end where you would actually strike someone. Don't know that there's anything to it, but I thought it was an uh, interesting thought. Uh, you cannot kill me in a way that matters, says, I think we're looking at everything with too critical of a lens. We're drawing too much from the past. We're not looking enough into the future. This is an evolving of Bray's story. It's based on things that have happened, but it's not entirely rooted there, which I think is really interesting. Like, do we run the risk of sort of holding this story back a bit and anchoring it too much with what's been before? Like maybe they do need a little bit of a break from the past, you know, because they're kind of coming back and they're looking to tell the best story they can. Maybe we shouldn't constantly be trying to find like connections to the past because perhaps they're not thinking along those lines you know? So I kind of feel like there might be something to that, you know? I think allowing them a little bit of freedom to kind of take this current story forward and not constantly trying to link it to stuff in the past. Yeah, that's prob it's probably a wise thing to just bear in mind, you know? Just bear in mind. Maybe not everything's going to fit perfectly, and that's okay. <laughs> like, that's okay. 
Uh, you cannot kill me in a way that matters, said I just had a thought. It looks like the Nikki mask might be based on her own face. Well, to be honest, I haven't studied it, so I really can't say. But I would be interested in some thoughts, theories on Nikki's mask. Because I do feel like it is likely based on someone. It's likely based on someone. Uh, Court of Wyndham follower said, I found something interesting about July 15th. Uh, there was a championship uh, change. So Ms. Taraj defeated Nat and Bray for the Raw Tag Team Championships on July 15th. Now, if you saw our video yesterday, you'll know that one of the clues from the Nightbird campaign sort of points to July 15th. So we're obviously very interested in that. The other thing about July 15th is it's going to be Raw in Ohio, and that is where Alexa is from. So it's sort of interesting. There's a few things that we're looking at with that date. It was also pointed out to me that July 8th will be the anniversary. I think it's the 11-year anniversary of the main roster debut of the Wyatt family. So July 8th. July 15th, they're dates that we're interested in. I don't know that anything's going to happen, but you can find a few little connections to those dates. Uh, Nick Butcher said, I just wondered if anyone had noticed that on the puzzle, on the last QR codes, there was a purple square under the letter V. Could this mean that the Judgment Day are going to be potential targets? Judgment Day have got five members and they use the color purple on their T-shirts, which is very interesting. We know that CG was on the journal. We know that Chad Gable got attacked. So what if that purple square is telling us who's going to be attacked next or that the Judgment Day are going to be, you know, a group that uh, the Wyatt Six kind of pay a visit at some point. I thought that was interesting. Uh, Laney Mags said, uh, the numbered journal entries are in the same order that they were shown on Raw. How interesting is that? So the numbers are in the same order that we saw the characters uh, during that segment. So Nikki was first, then it was Rowan, then it was uh, Dexter, then it was Joe Gacy. And that's the order they're written in the journal. So very good. Brady, thank you. Just tagging me in this uh, tweet from Joe Gacy. Good picture that in it. What with Chad in the corner as well. Uh, Wrestle Night uh, talking about what if the red and the blue lights signify Uncle Howdy and the Fiend. Uh, only the blue lights flicker, uh, possibly because Howdy has already arrived. What if the red light didn't flicker because the Fiend is laying dormant? Um, I think there might be something to that. It's It's hard to know because obviously Raw and SmackDown are red and blue. So I feel like that gorilla position might need red and blue lights. Uh, they'll only turn the red ones on for Raw. And then for SmackDown, they just turn the blue ones on, right? So it might just be that there are red and blue lights for that reason in gorilla. And in order to get across the massacre, we just had both, like, you know, the red and the blue lights on. I don't know that it's indicating that they're going to be on SmackDown. I don't know that the lights are telling us that. I really don't mind the theory that the red represents the fiend and the blue represents Uncle Howdy. I don't mind that at all. Uh, it does remind me, though, because we have had this conversation before of this. So the Mo Show said, I think it is purposefully done. Blue shows up every time Bray would get upset or go insane. And red is synonymous with the Fiend during his matches. Those are just my thoughts. So again, this was backstage back in 2022 when Bray was doing his promo. You had the red light over here. You had the blue light over there. I think this was just part of the presentation personally. And I think there's a chance that the light in that we saw during the massacre was part of the presentation as well. I don't really know that it's telling us anything, but I'm keeping an open mind, definitely keeping an open mind. So that's why I wanted to include this. I thought it was an interesting thought. And I know many of you out there think that it does connect to SmackDown and that we will see them 
on SmackDown. So we'll have to wait and see. Not long till we find out. Roger said Hex has got six sides, so six members. Truncheon is a thick stick which is used as a weapon like Rowan's hammer. Prey, uneven balance of power in a relationship. Stronger one victimizes the weaker one. Uh, and Spark, a piece of fire that flies out of something, maybe fireflies. So, uh, Roger, just trying to figure out these titles. You know, this was the title of each of the notes in the journal for each of the members in this new group. So I thought that was interesting. I like that. Uh, Gino said the whites, so this, I guess, is the bride, is lightly symbolic for rebirth and a new beginning, no longer dormant, both the puppet and Nikki. Everything is loosely based, right? Not exact. So everyone will carve out their own identities. I thought this was interesting because when Sister Abigail or Abby the Witch was in Bray's mind, she wore black. And was that because she was trapped? Because she was trapped in his mind. Like she did say things like, when will you let me rest? You know, perhaps she felt trapped in there. She didn't want to be in there. Maybe now that she is out and she is free, now she doesn't need to wear black anymore. So she now wears white. I wonder. I don't know. I thought that was a very interesting thought, though. Uh, Fightful uh, just giving us an update that Chad Gable is out of his Money in the Bank qualifier on Raw, right? Ilya Dragunov is going to replace him. Real shame that WWE have not uh, told us more information about that uh, there's been no information on the massacre people are just joking about how everyone got murdered i don't think anyone got murdered i totally expect to see chad gable again right so i don't think he got murdered i don't think any of the producers got murdered i think they were uh incapacitated but i don't think they were murdered um but chad has suffered injuries to the point where he is out right you see like fightful are just joking with this premeditated murder apparently no one seemingly said that right uh premeditated is planned so this planned murder means that chad gable is out of this match i don't think it went that far right i don't think they murdered him but this is wwe's fault for not getting clarity out there this is wwe's fault for not telling everyone what exactly has happened so now everyone's just, or not everyone, but some people are thinking that there was this mass murder. And who knows? Maybe there was. I don't think there was, but maybe there was. Right here, look, Wrestle Features just saying that PW Insider have confirmed that all of the victims of the Wyatt Six beyond Chad Gable were all talents brought in as extras. So PW Insider is saying only chad gable was the only talent that got caught up in this thing everyone else was just extras that got brought in just for that segment right so uh, all of that chatter all of that noise all of those theories uh, of who had been attacked why they were attacked what was linking them it was noise. It was just noise. We, we, I felt pretty confident from the start, right? And I'm really not blowing my own trumpet on this, but I really did. You can watch the previous two videos I've done since Monday. I could only identify Chad Gable. I could not identify anyone else. And I really think if they wanted you to know that other wrestlers had been caught up in this. I think they would have made it a lot more obvious. They would have lit them better. They would have focused on them more. I don't think you would have been in any doubt, right? So I can't say I'm too surprised about this, that Chad Gable is uh, apparently the only one that was caught up, like, talent-wise. But it's, it's good. It's good to get this clarity. I wish that WWE had done this and we weren't having to rely on PW Insider. Uh, Nick Butcher said, I've got another theory about that purple square, and this one makes sense. What if the target is Carlito? Didn't he lie to the LWO and then join Judgment Day? 
Howdy hates liars. I think Carlito is a more plausible target for the Wyatt Six. That's interesting. I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that because that then leads the Wyatt Six into a feud with Judgment Day. Uh, the other thing we've got here, this was from a video that went on YouTube today. This is Shotzi talking about her most recent tattoo. And it's that. It's the Bray Wyatt logo. And she just goes on to say that she was so captivated by the Wyatt family that that's what made her want to become a wrestler. So she really does kind of give all the credit for her joining wrestling to Bray Wyatt. So uh, it means, you know, means a lot to her. So she's had that tattoo done. So it's, it's a very interesting little video that went up on the YouTube channel today. <laughs> Look at this. Chris said, I found the sixth member. There we go. There we go. This is the guy that tried to get past Bo Dallas to go to the bathroom. This is Alexa Bliss. I mean, it's not, right? But uh, let's think that it is. Because imagine that for like crazy makeup. It's be, it'd be like a modern Mrs. Doubtfire, right? So uh, there we go. There we go. Found the sixth member. Uh, Enrico said, Days, I had a thought. Uh, someone might have pointed this out. The light that shined in the door had six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. It did. Uh, it was different than the light that they used for Bray. It seems like a purposeful change. Very good. Very good. Uh, it is worth mentioning that obviously there was a little thing that happened at the end of Pat's show earlier. I don't put any stock into that, right? I, I really don't. I think that that was a way of just getting that show to trend. I mean, the, his show came to an end. There was a noise, that little noise that was heard, and that was it, right? And then everyone on social media was talking about it. I, I don't think that was anything but just a way of getting his show to trend. That was it, right? So I don't care about that i don't put any stock into that um but i thought i'd mention it because i'm sure people will be like oh you didn't mention this well there you go i've mentioned it now right um for me i think the hacking of adam pierce's thing that was the biggest thing i saw today so uh yeah well listen i mean we've got to find out haven't we what's going to go down on smackdown that's going to be uh not that far away I think there's a chance that we get some glitches. I think there's a chance that we could get a QR code that will point us to Monday. There may be some puppets or things in the background. That's where my expectation is for SmackDown. I'm not expecting anything more than that. I'm not expecting the group. I'm not expecting to see them. I'm not expecting um, a, a massacre. I'm certainly not expecting that. Um, could it happen? Sure. But I think they're going to be Raw exclusive. I think we might have to wait till Monday before we get something really juicy again. So, yeah, I'm going to say that we don't get we don't get um, another massacre, which might disappoint people. But I think there's a chance we get something. And plus, also, I don't know, do I? So I could be completely wrong. So uh, come and join me. We'll be doing the watch along for it. Uh, we'll be doing the watch along um, for SmackDown. And uh, we always start a few hours before. So uh, stop by and uh, we'll have a chat about things. I'm sure there'll be more stuff happening tomorrow. So uh, appreciate you joining us. Thanks for watching. I will see you hopefully tomorrow for SmackDown. But if not, then probably I will see you on Monday when I'm sure we will get some more Wyatt Six. Bye for now.